This is the preview of the Baylor versus Pacific Women's Volleyball game. Yes, and this is done in advance. The match is September 10th at 10 a.m., which the only way to keep track is live stats. Until there is anything in terms of like way to watch otherwise, just assume that only. And Pacific played their last match like September 2nd, and the only reason why I'm doing it so far in advance here is because it's literally three matches, I mean, two prior matches before us. So, and, and also, I don't know the ranking for Baylor at this time, which I would put in the title above, and I would assume they have to be at least in the top 15. At least because of that rice wind, I was number 18 in the country, and then some of the results help might have helped us in the rankings as well. So, this is just assumption here. And we do play Colorado State September 8th and Bowling Green September 9th. And I will do separate videos for both of those as soon as, as, soon as they are done playing the last official match prior to the. The Colorado, I mean, the Ram Volleyball Classic, where you play three matches in three days. Obviously, in this last game against Pacific, you got to stay mentally tough and physically tough and mentally tough because I know it's not going to be easy playing three matches in three days. Oh, no. It won't be. And you will become, but luckily, you do play at 11 a.m. the day before. But then, but prior to that, it's six, I mean, 6 p.m. Central Time, and these are Central Time times, by the way. So Pacific right now is four and two prior to the last two games, which I do not know what's going to really happen against Bowling Green for them and Colorado State for them. So just to keep that in mind on this, and their only wins up to this point for Pacific are UC Davis three sets to one, Nevada three sets to none, Seattle three sets to none, and Eastern. Washington three sets to none. So just a FYI on that situation. What are some players to keep an eye on in this game against them? First of all, number one, Alexa Edwards. She's a five foot eleven inch outside hitter that's a senior. 67 kills on 205 attempts with 32 attacking errors, 5 assists, 3 service aces, 13 service errors, 7 receiving errors, which is the most on the team, 68 digs, 7 blocks, which 4 of those are solo, 1 blocking error, 4 ball handling errors. I mean, that's just a FYI on that. The next player to keep an eye on is Jenna Heller, number 2, and she is a 5 to 10 inch setter, that's a junior. 13 kills on 34 attempts with one error. Attacking error, 166 assists, which leads the team. Six service aces, six service errors, 57 digs, one block, which was a solo block, and three ball handling errors. The second most on the team, by the way. I'm trying to go down here and see which player to keep an eye on again. Number four, Dylan Gilkey is another player to keep an eye on, and that's a five and nine inch setter that's a freshman. And I get, she doesn't have a lot, I mean, one kill on two attempts, but 63 assists, two service aces, three service errors, 24 digs, though, and one ball handling error. Another player to keep on is like Ramoni Cook, R A M O double N I. I apologize if I butcher that whatsoever. Number seven, six foot one inch outside hitter. That's a senior. So, what can she do? Like, 30, 29 kills on 89 attempts with two, I mean, 10 attacking errors, six digs, 10 blocks. One of those is solo and one ball handling error. Another player to keep an eye on is like Emily Van Groen. Groningen, G R O N I N G E N. Apologize if I butchered that name. Number eight, six foot two inch middle blocker. That's a sophomore. 
39 kills on 87 attempts, 13 attacking errors, 3 assists, 2 service aces, 8 service errors, 12 digs, 20 blocks, 4 of those are solo, 1 blocking error, 1 ball handling error. I'm only going to mention this Clarkson because of the number of aces is the most on the team, and that's Megan Nishimura, N I S H I M U R A, and she is a five foot eight inch libero. That's a junior. I mean, yeah. She has no kills on two attempts. But 33 assists, 8 service aces, 4 service errors, 6 receiving errors, which is the second most on the team, 97 digs, which is the most on the team. That's why I'm mentioning her, and that's all she's done this year. The next player to keep an eye on is Logan Blue Trite, or something like that, number 12, B L U T R E I C H. I apologize if I that last name she's a six foot two inch middle blocker that's a sophomore 26 kills on 65 attempts with 13 errors one assist 10 digs 10 blocks but two of those are solo one ball handling error the next player to keep an eye on is number 15 Donari Darina Kuma Nova, number 15, K U M A N O V A. Apologize if I butchered that name. Six foot outside hitter. That's a senior, and as you could tell on these players, they're not like six foot three or above so far. I mean, it's 46 kills on 146 attempts, 35 errors, attacking errors, four assists, four service aces, 11 service errors. Five receiving errors, 47 digs. And the last player to keep an eye on because apparently. Yeah. yeah, because the other other player has not played up to this point. It's Beyond Bay by Cabernet Galley. K A B E N G I E L E. I apologize if I burped in virtue that name number 26 foot outside hitter that's a fifth year senior from Michigan State that was at Michigan State prior I don't know if she transferred in just this year or what but 79 kills which is the most on the team 205 attempts 32 attacking errors four sir I mean four assists six surfaces aces seven source errors one receiving error 23 digs, two, I mean 15 blocks, two of those are solo, and two blo blocking errors. So, as you can tell, we need to contain the best players in terms of kills, and you don't need to allow that many blocks, if any. I mean, we don't need to have that happen. And of course, you gotta limit your errors as much as possible. Of course, you don't want to get service based on a lot, or have a lot of receiving errors. You gotta get some kills. You gotta dig every ball, to, and of course, if there's a free, a free pass like, overpass like the ball hit the other side and it came way back to your over, to your side, you gotta take advantage. I mean, you gotta make them pay for overpasses. And of course, if it goes straight up over and a middle blocker or somebody's right there, and you can put it away, put it away. I mean, obviously, you gotta keep. In mind all these good attackers for them in terms of numbers here and you gotta stay focused you gotta stay mentally ready because I know it's not gonna be easy playing three matches in three days but it's gonna strengthen you as a team to go through fatigue at times I mean and it builds your endurance down the line for bigger matches and and all that obviously you don't need a good off to slow starts and you kind of have to be better in third sets because up to this point the third set has been the really off one and I get that rice one you were down big and you came back but only last 26 24 but it was too much to overcome so of course you got to have crisp passing because in order to get some kills that are 
easier, you got to have good passing. And you got to communicate. It's like, who got ball? Who got it? Who got it? You know? So, and I get this is way done in advance. Obviously, you're going to have to look at the film on them after every match and correct what you need to correct prior to those other matches. And like I said, you got to stay men mentally ready and mentally focused. And I get it's going to be fatiguing because you're going to play three matches in three days. And this is your third match in three days, but you could do it. I know you can't. So, and obviously, what you when you did pretty good a lot like those other matches, you got to continue prior. So that's just some keys right there. And of course, you don't want to have like like a, like rotation error or cross the line, like the midline, you can't have that happen, so, you know, so, anyways, if you like this content, I can subscribe button, see you guys later, find subscribers, we're on the road to it, let's go.